Hey Glendale, welcome to this edition of the 411. I'm Aaron Thompson. And I'm Abby Blanton. He spends his time, or maybe half of his time, or part of the time wandering around the creeks and cobblestones of Hackney Lanes. With a tear in his eye, as the children walk by, he's thinking of the sound and stops to paint a picture of a friend. Walking around. First story, John and Joel teach us how to change a tire. Oh. Oh. What the heck just happened? Oh man. I think I got a flat tire, dude. For all you high school students out there who have car troubles, we're here to help. We know a lot of you don't know what to do when your car breaks down, especially ladies, and that's why we're doing this tutorial. Yep, we're going to show you step by step. You're going to save a lot of money doing it yourself. People always come in with simple repairs that they could do themselves, like dead batteries, just buy a new one at Pet Boys, preferably. And, uh, you can change that at your house. Uh, tail lights, uh, flat tires, oil changes, you can all do that and save yourself some money. If you're not familiar with cars, you can uh, check out your owner's manual. It'll uh, help you change tires, uh, the oil, tell you what specific kinds you need. All right, now we're gonna show you how to change a tire if you ever get a flat. The most important thing you gotta remember is to always put your car in park and make sure you got your uh, parking brake on. Before you uh, put your car on the jack, what you wanna do is break all the uh, lug nuts loose, so it makes it a lot easier to take off when you start lifting it up. Then I gotta do it the right way. All right, you want to get your jack out and uh, get it started, you know, and then you're going to want to put it under under the car, directly behind the tire, and you want to make sure you put it under the frame or you're going to have some problems. All right, once you get your jack under the car, you want to just start cranking it to the right and uh, give it a little time and we'll be lifting up the car. All right, once you got your tire uh, jacked up, and you got your lug nuts already loose, you can just spin them off real quick and get this tire changed. Alright. Right. That's how you do it. Alright, after you take that flat tire off, you want to locate your spare tire. Most of them are in the trunk of your car or uh, under it sometimes. When you put on that spare tire, make sure you uh, tighten all those lug nuts at the same tightness. You don't want any of them too tight, you know. And uh, then you're ready to go riding. riding. All right, after you get all those lug nuts tightened, you want to start lowering the jack down and make sure you always snug up those uh, lug nuts before you start driving because you don't want your tires falling off. And that's how you change a tire on a car right there, ladies and gentlemen. So next time you need to change a tire, your oil, or brake light, or something like that, just make sure uh, you can do it on your own. You don't have to spend the money at the shop, and just spend that on something else. Signing out for the very last time, ladies and gentlemen. This is John. John Octagon. Much love. Goodbye. Some of you may have noticed that the school is a little emptier than it was first semester. Alec and Hunter bring us the story on early leavers. Every year a semester, a handful of seniors graduate early. But why do these people graduate early and is it a good idea? Usually we have around 25, I believe we have about 26 or 27 this year that are planning to leave early. Generally we do not recommend students to leave early. Um, we feel like it's in their best interest to stay in school. Um, there's always more courses that they can um, take. Why are students around Glendale leaving early? Mainly the main reason I'm getting out of school early is because I really just want to get a head start on the competition out there, you know. The world's tough, you know. You just got to get a head start on things sometimes. I thought I went into senior year last year and I really don't. And I just want to get out of here. And after I leave here, I'm planning to either work full time at my job at Forever 21 or get two jobs if that doesn't work out. There are circumstances where students do need to leave early for you know, various reasons. Um, 
mostly students will leave early if they are going to start college early. I'm leaving because I'm done with high school pretty much. I'm uh, graduating early, going to go work for a while and plan on going to the military. So what are some juniors saying about graduating early? I'm not going to graduate early as a senior because it looks better for colleges. No, I love school. It's a little bit too late to leave early right now, but there's always next year. Signing out for the 411, this is Hunter Lane and Alec Indick. Who doesn't like a big scavenger hunt? Alex and Elise bring us a story on geocaching. Geocaching is an app that you can get on your phone, and what it is is like you just like type in your location and there's geocaches everywhere. It's like a national treasure hunt kind of thing. And so it'll be like, there's a geocache 0.2 miles away from you. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And then you click on it and it'll just tell you like the title of it. And then it'll tell you a little description about it. And then you'll be like, oh my gosh, that sounds so fun. Let's go find it. And so you click, let's go. So you like have spent hours or five minutes depending on how hard it is to find it um, and you find the geocache and then um, it's usually like a little like Tupperware container or sometimes it's like it does they vary in size and then there's usually a piece of paper and you write down your name and the date that you found it. Well one day I think it was a Wednesday I was sitting at my house with my dad and he said it was about nine o'clock we were pretty bored and he was like Emily, do you want to go geocaching? And I was like, what's geocaching? And he was like, well, this guy I work with told me about it, and it's just like this really fun treasure hunt thing. And at first I didn't believe him. I was like, we're not going to go to a location and find a treasure that somebody already hid there. But we did, and it was just so fun, and I told all my friends. The small ones, they're kind of, I mean, they're fun, but they're kind of hard because you have to like really like, like look for it. Like Katie, I always go with Katie Hunt, and she like climbs up in trees and finds them. But I mean, they're fun, but they're not that fun. <laughs> I like geocaching because it's kind of like treasure hunting um, for different things, and it's fun to like use the clues and stuff. Signing out for the 411, this is Elise Monroe, Alex Opfer, and Maddie Cash. Final story is on Frisbee golf done by a Broadcast One class. Signing out for the 411, this is Abby Blanton and Aaron Thompson. There are a lot of fun, free things for teenagers to do in Springfield, but one of the things kids are doing is frothing. Hi, I'm Cody. Um, we're here at the Froth Park in Ozark, playing froth. It stands for Frisbee Golf, and it's one of the funnest games you'll ever play. <laughs> I got into it because one day, me and Joe, and Sam, and Lloyd were bored, and we decided to go play froth, and I've been playing for about three months ever since. I've been frothing for about three months now. I've been playing frisbee golf for about a year now, uh, ever since my brother got me a disc for my birthday. Uh, this is probably only the third time I've frothed, and it's actually really fun. I like it. Well, there are many different types of disc used in frisbee golf, and like since a lot of the holes can be uh, even a couple hundred yards, uh, you have to have the type of lightweight disc that you can throw at long distance, and it's called a driver, and it's basically built to fly. 
Once you get up, after you've thrown your driver, you might want to switch to a mid-range disc, which is basically a hybrid. It is more heavy than a driver, but I mean, it's not quite as heavy as your putter, which you use when you are pretty close to the uh, chain and you really want to just sink it in there. Well, there's a four, four hand throw where you throw it like this. And there's the uh, backhand throw where you throw it like this. There's also the tomahawk where you just throw it up straight in the air. And there are other ways to throw it. It just depends on how good your skill level is. The challenge of how you like can progressively see how it gets like how you improve like different throws and stuff and just like how a lot of like factors take place whenever you're playing. I find that some of the most challenging aspects of froth are uh, trees that might get in your way on certain holes or deep hills that you have to maneuver around and through. And so Frisbee golf, also known as froth, is a great outdoor activity that a lot of kids are getting into these froth days. Froth is a great way to catch from fresh air and most of all, stay out of trouble. Take it from some real frothers. <laughs> <laughs> 